Hey, what's up, fellas? How we doing? Matt Antonelli here, answering your questions today. Today's question is on swing changes in the major leagues, working with major league hitting coaches, my experience with them. I have some funny stories. I think, at least I think they're funny. Um, now, I didn't really think they were funny back then. Uh, but talking about some of the changes they wanted me to make and how it went and, you know, how all that works. Because I know a lot of players out there deal with, you know, a lot of different hitting coaches and a lot of different philosophies. And so I'll give you a little bit of uh, what it's like at the major leagues and in the minor leagues. Um, so when it comes to swing changes, here's, I'll give you my personal story, okay? Um, you know, throughout most of my life, a lot of people didn't talk to me about hitting, okay? When I went in high school, I mean, I hit really well in high school. I hit really well in college. No one really said anything. Everyone just like, all right, go ahead. I said, okay. I went and I hit. Obviously, it's a lot easier to hit in high school and college than it is professionally. But get, to the, get drafted, um, go to play in the minor leagues, and show up. For whatever reason, my first short season, I didn't hit any home runs in short season. So I hit around 300. I got on base a ton. Um, I walked a ton. That was usually my game. I was never a huge power hitter. I hit 11 home runs my last year of college. And so I'm not like a humongous power hitter, but I hit no home runs. And so, you know, my hitting coach in, in short season, we worked on a couple of things. When I got to instructional league after short season ended, or I went short season to, to low A, and then after that ended, I went to instructional league. And that's where I was able to work with our, you know, really started to get into some stuff with our um, hitting coordinator, who who's basically controls the minor leagues and the and the hitting that goes uh, goes about and happens in the minor leagues. And it was Rob Deere. Um, and the funny thing is, when we were working together, it wasn't a lot of mechanical stuff at that time. I was a really patient hitter, almost too patient, and so we really talked about trying to get myself to be a little bit more aggressive. They thought that I had the power to hit for more more power. I just wasn't attacking good pitch. I was taking way too many pitches. I was a leadoff hitter in college, and I probably was way too passive. We talked about this in the past. And so we talked about anticipating getting my pitch and being aggressive and, and seeing myself get that pitch and drive it. And um, we didn't do a ton of mechanical stuff, but I come out the next season in high A and I come on the first half of the year and I have 14 home runs. Um, so I got a lot of home runs and half of the season It's the most home runs I've ever hit in my life. Um, and the interesting thing is I get moved up to double A and this was the first time, and this is the interesting thing about pro ball, and I've talked to a lot of players about this. This was the first time where I kind of shoot through the minors really quick, and I'm already in double A real fast. I'm still like 22, just turned 22 in double A. And um, all of a sudden, like, people start talking about front office, and, and they start talking about, hey, like, you know, this might, this is at least what they told me, and other players happened to as well we start talking mechanically and they start saying like you know i know you're doing this and this and i know you're hitting well now but you know that stuff doesn't work in the big leagues you know you've got to do this you got to change this a lot of it revolved around um my elbow so i used to hit with a really high elbow you got my elbow up i don't know if you can see that um and they didn't like that not everybody they were sort of like my my high hitting coach literally would be like dude just keep hitting just like just hit don't worry about your elbow and, uh, but a lot of people would be like, we got, you got to change that. Like nobody hits with a high elbow. At that time, I had never watched film really in my life. I didn't really, I never paid attention to the swing. Now I look back and I'm like, man, a lot of guys hit with a high elbow. But so whatever, I honestly didn't change anything. Like my hitting coach who was awesome was like, dude, like you're raking, just keep raking. Don't, don't worry about it. Like I'll take care of it. But for whatever reason, uh, I ended the year, I ended up hitting 21 home runs that year. But if you look at the last month of my of uh, the season that year, I don't think I hit any home runs. So I hit like 21 home runs in the first, you know, take away the last month, I hit 21 home runs. I probably should have hit 25, 20, you know, more. But I really started slumping. Looking back, I look back at my swing and my swing started to change a little bit. I don't remember consciously thinking, change your swing. It just happened for whatever reason, okay? So that season ends and... Now, I, I go to Major League Camp the next year. Uh, actually, first I went to Arizona Fall League, and I hit terrible again. So I knew something was wrong, uh, but I didn't know what. I go to spring training the next year, and all of a sudden now, it's like they've got, we got a new roving or new hitting coordinator. And here's the thing in spring training is like all of a sudden when you're hitting, like all the coaches are there. So the single A, the double A, the short season, the triple A, the major league, everybody's there. 
And when you start hitting in the cage before, like there's always different coaches. All of a sudden, it's like everyone starts coming over to you and like starts talking to you, like, "Hey, man, man, I, I, hey, listen, I know you had a tough year out there, you know, but listen, you know, just try, try this, try like, you know, try to get your feet, you try to spread out a little bit. I think you're a little bit too narrow, and try to spread out and take, you know, not as big a stride. Okay, all right, I'll try that. And then the next coach will come over and be like, "Hey, man, like, listen, I know you're struggling a little bit last year, but." Um, you know, try to get your feet a little bit closer together and take a bigger stride. I think you're too wide and you're like, all right, yeah, 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 I'll try that, man. Okay, cool. You try that a little bit. And then someone else will come over and be like, hey, like, listen, your bat, you're like wrapping your bat a little bit. Like, you know, maybe try to put your bat over here a little. Okay, yeah, I'll try that. Okay, cool. And then the next coach will come over and be like, hey, man, like your bat's too much like this. Maybe you should try to get it behind your head a little bit more. And you're like, all right, man. Yeah, I'll try that. And like, before you know it, it's like, you're like standing up there and you're like, how do I wait? I do. <laughs> and you don't know what to do. That's at least what happened to me. Um, so I started thinking a little bit too much about hitting. And I, you know, one of the things I, I did that didn't help was I listened to everybody. I just, you're a player and you're a young player and you don't want to act like you are cocky and you know what you're doing because you really don't know what you're doing. Um, and so you just kind of listen to a bunch of people. But you have to, one of the things that I would talk to minor league players about um, is like you have to just be careful of trying too many things because you will like literally like spin yourself into the ground because you'll, you get, you'll get 50 different words of advice from everybody. Um, and it's really, really difficult. And I am not the only one that this has happened to. I've talked to tons of players that like everyone says the same thing when it comes to minor league baseball and sometimes major league baseball. And so, um, I ended up having like the next year was brutal. I ended up hitting like 213 in AAA. It was the worst year of my life. But at the end of the year, I got with a guy, Sean Wooten. I've talked about this, I think, before in a video, um, who was a teammate of mine and who was with me in double A when I hit really well. He ended up be getting traded over and he was our catcher in triple A. And he ended up being like the, the guy that was like, dude, like, what the F are you doing? Like, I saw you hit last year. Why are you doing all this stuff? And I was really confused and he helped break it down. He said, listen, like, this is what you have to do. And so, you know, we went over a ton of video and I started like seeing it. He showed me old video. And I started seeing this stuff and I was like, holy shit, like, you're right, man. Like, and so we started working on it and I ended up hitting 300 the last month of the season or right around the last month of the season in AAA. Finally felt like I was back again. And it's funny because like, I remember like the first time I started hitting all my teammates were like, oh shit, like they call me Anto back then. They were like, Anto's back. He's back. Like he's been gone for two years. He couldn't hit, but he's back. And like, so I started hitting. I feel good. I ended up getting called up to the major leagues. This is no joke. Play in the major leagues, first game, get up first step bat, get a hit. Uh, then I, you know, ground out, ground out, you know, fly out something. I'm one for four at the end of the game. Get called, the game ends, go in, major league, or uh, hitting coach calls me over and says, hey, listen, man, get to the park early tomorrow because tomorrow we're, we're changing your swing. And I was like, and inside I was like, no. <laughs> but I was like, all right, yeah, I'll be here. So I show up the next day. And um, we put my feet really close together and they gave me this big old leg kick. Now, I've talked all the time about how like, you know, some guys say we're leg kick, some guys are wider, some guys are this, some guys are that. I always felt more comfortable being a little bit wider, um, not having as big of a move. Some guys feel better being narrow. But regardless, I put my feet close together, I tried to leg kick, I tried to move more, and I felt terrible. I was thinking about it a lot. I was in the major leagues, and you know, it's really hard because they, you know, what they said to me was, don't worry about your stats, man. Just just focus on getting better and focus on doing what we're telling you to do. And it's really hard when you're playing on TV every night and it's your career. And so I ended up going O for my next 21, I think. And I was hitting O30 at one point, and it was like the worst experience of my life. I like didn't want to play baseball anymore because you know, I'm trying to do this stuff at the major leagues. I'm facing Clayton Kershaw. Like the next game I face Clayton Kershaw and I'm worrying about like, how do I do a leg kick and hit and also hit this hammer breaking ball and a guy throwing 95. It became really difficult and uh, I didn't hit well. I ended up hit, like I said, I went over 21, I think. Um, but I kept working on it. And at the end of this, you know, I finished uh, that season hitting right around 200. I think I hit just under 200. Um, and so the interesting thing, a lot of people don't realize this, and this is not to make excuses or anything, but a lot of people will be like, man, you suck. You hit 200 that year. You stink. Like, but no one really knows everything that's going on behind the scenes. Um, 
And that happens with a lot of different players. So it's just interesting. Anyways, um, I should have still been able to figure out and get more hits than I did. So that was my experience as far as, you know, with the Padres. That was my last time with the Padres. Um, I actually ended up, well, I played another year or so. Um, but I was banged up. I was hurt and ended up getting not released, but non-tender, which made me a free agent. And I moved on. So that was my experience with with hitting coaches there. A lot of that continued to happen kind of the next year. Everyone's kind of trying to figure out, you know, how do we fix this guy? Like everyone thinks they know how to fix the guy, but everyone's just kind of given different information. Like I said, it gets really confusing. So one of the lessons I learned, and I'm not lying, they had me meet with a uh, psychologist, I guess you would say, you call it. And they talked to me. One of the things, you know, I, I told this guy basically what I just told you. And one of the things the psychologist said to me, this is during my time at the Padres, is he said, because people thought it was in my head. They're like, this guy used to be really good and he's not now. He's a freaking whack job. He's a head case. He can't hit. Um, and so I met with this guy like all the time. And one of the things he told me was, he said, listen, you can't, like, this is your career. You cannot try to listen to 500 people and try to do 500 different things. He's like, cause you're going to confuse yourself just like you've done. And you're, you're not going to like, you know how to hit, like you have to take control of your career. It's your career. Like figure it out, take control of it. And if someone tells you to do something that you don't feel comfortable with, or you've already tried, it, it doesn't work. Just tell them and just say it nicely. And I was like, that was really hard for me to do, but I said, okay. So the next year I get signed by the nationals. I show up to camp. This is not a lie. I show up to camp. We're in like the second day, okay? Now, I worked all off-season to get, to get better, to get back. And I, I, I spread out again. I, I did a couple of different things. Not that spreading out solved everything, but whatever. I felt great going, in the, going into that season. It's like the second day of camp, and all of a sudden, I'm hitting, and our hitting coordinator comes over, and he's like, hey, I got to talk to you for a minute. I was like, what's up? He goes, listen. He's like, we got to work. We've really got to change you. Like, we've got to narrow you up a little bit and we got to get you a little bit more of a move. Okay. Um, and I, and literally I was like, oh my God, like, this is like Groundhog Day. This is day to all over again. And so for the first time in my life, I said, can I talk to you about this? And he said, yeah, sure. And I said, listen, I said, I really appreciate um, the help and it makes sense. I said, but literally like two years ago, last year, whenever it was, I said, I tried a lot of this stuff and I really just, it, I just don't, it doesn't feel comfortable to me. I said, I really feel better with my feet a little bit wider. And, you know, it was one of the changes I, I went back to and I've really found some success. And, you know, I, I know that I'm new here. I've only been here a few days, but I really appreciate it if I could try this for a little bit and just see if it works. And if it doesn't work, then I will be gladly, I, I'd gladly narrow up a little bit. And he said, yeah, okay, man, no problem. So the next day, um, I get a call from my agent and I pick up the phone and he goes, dude, what the hell did you do? And I'm like, what are you talking about? And he's like, I just got off the phone with someone in the front office and they just told me that you're uncoachable and you're not listening to anything they say. And you're a new player. You should be, you should be learning and taking coaching. And I was like, Oh my God, <laughs> like first time in my life I've been, that's the first time in my life I've ever told anyone what I was really feeling about coaching. And like, backfired. I did everything that I thought I, I was supposed to do and uh, they were not happy about it. And so um, that season, you know, I ended up having a really good year that year, actually. Um, ended up making the all-star team in AAA, didn't get called up, ended up hitting like, you know, right around 300 again. I was hurt. I got hurt again. I only played like 80 games or so, but thought I had a chance to get called up at the end of the year, was the organizational player of the year in uh, August and I didn't get called up. But Again, that's kind of a behind the scenes kind of thing. I don't think I've really told anyone that story. Um, but again, interesting how that all happens. And uh, I don't know, just funny story. Um, and then from there, you know, that was kind of the biggest thing that happened to me. From there, my swing got a little bit better, but I was kind of up and down. I got injured a lot. So the last like couple of years of my career, I was really banged up. Excuse me. I wasn't really able to hit a ton. Like I couldn't even hit in the cage a lot because my wrist would be hurting me. I tried to conserve, you know, I, I wouldn't take as many swings because I wanted to make sure I was healthy for the games and I just never hit again. Um, but I think that kind of illustrates uh, a lot of what goes on with hitting coaches and not that it's all like that, but I've talked to a lot of guys where that happens. And so hopefully that gives you guys a little bit of insight. I'd be interested if you guys, if any guys out there have played minor league ball or even major league ball or college ball or whatever ball and have dealt with similar things like that. 
um, let me know in the comment section below. Uh, anyways, I appreciate the question. Thank you so much for writing in. Um, subscribe to the channel if you've not done so already. Give us a thumbs up. Share the video with all your friends. Um, check out our Instagram, Antonelli Baseball, our Twitter feed, Matt Antonelli, Matt Antonelli 9, where I'm posting videos all the time for you guys. Um, check out the description box below. I've got books and training tools. I got links to all that stuff that I think you guys will enjoy. Check out our website, AntonelliBaseball.com, where you can find out how to work with our staff and our team. And that's all I got for you guys. Thank you again so much. I appreciate it. And we'll talk to you later.